everyone good afternoon how are you all doing remember my name is rachel and pathfinders we're kind of part of a pack where we're all joining learning about nature sharing stories and doing some scraptastic crafts now i'm wondering if any of you had snow this weekend just as we're waiting for people to join in let's see did any of you get snow and if so, did you build a snowman? That is one of the most important things. Hi, Lene. Is that how you say it? Hopefully I've said it right. Hi, June. There's a lot of you joining in. So, yes, yes, some people had snow. We had at first no snow, and I was a bit disappointed. But then we seemed to have a lot more snow. We did build a snowman, and then some of our friends built a snow bench, which was lots of fun as well. So we did get out. Hi, lots of people joining in. Brilliant. We have got some good stuff planned today and little surprise for you, especially if you're on the older end, maybe kind of 10, 11, 12, or if you're someone who's just really excited and a bit of an expert in nature, then I do have an extra video for you this week. Or if you're someone who's a little bit younger and finds this kind of session a little bit too long, maybe a little boring, who knows, then I do have a session for you as well. So they will be on YouTube after this. So, yep, quite a few of you had... Oh, someone's got a water leak. Oh, no. Ma'am, I'm sorry you've got a water leak, but don't worry, you can catch up afterwards. Maybe you'll find some frogs in there as you're trying to sort that out. I hope that gets sorted really quickly. Hi, Lauren, James and Josh. Elena had snow. Hi, Willow and Caden. Lots of you today. Brilliant. Now, let's get to it. Let me make sure I'm pressing the right things. So yes, this week is all about fantastic frogs and where to find them because you might find if you're visiting your local pond some new activity happening. Maybe some frog spawn. I know somebody found a little tiny frog in their garden this week, someone who lives further down south, so maybe the weather's a little bit warmer there. So you will be spotting some frogs or some frog spawn or some tadpoles. So I thought we would do a session all about that. We're going to go straight into our story. Now, sometimes when I try and find stories for these sessions, I find stories that I just, I like them, but the ending of them, I just do not like. They have this ending, they got married and they lived happily ever after. And it always seems a bit confusing because usually they've known each other for about five minutes and then they get married. And also no one lives happily ever after. There's always things that are a bit hard and tricky. And so sometimes I leave those bits in and then other times I change them because with stories that are told after time, after time, after time, we can be a little bit more flexible. So the story that I've got today, you might recognize it, but I have changed it quite a lot, okay? So we'll see what you think. Are you ready for your story? Oh, I forgot to say, grown ups, perfect time for you to go and grab a cup of tea maybe custard cream, one of my favorite biscuits. Right, let's get this story going. So how are we gonna do this then? Good cup, bad cup, bad cup, good cup? Oh, you've gotta let me be the bad cup, please. I've been practicing. Yeah, okay. Okay, here we go. Let's do this. So it is uh, 2 10 p.m. March the 13th. The interview is starting now. So just could you, for the record, please state your name, please? Oi, princess, put the phone down and start talking. I'm sorry for my uh, colleague there. He uh, hasn't had his coffee this morning. Um, yeah, so if you can just clearly state your name, please, for the record. Uh, don't you know who I am? I'm Princess Lilypad the Third. I have like 50,000 followers on TikTok. Hashtag influencer. <sighs> okay, thank you, Princess Lilypad. So, um... You understand why you're here, don't you? You have been arrested for breaking a promise. This is a really serious crime and we need to get to the bottom of what happened. <sighs> Listen, Lilypad, we know you did it. We know you broke the promise, so you better start talking now. Again, I'm sorry for my colleague there, but yeah, can you tell us a little bit more about what happened? Whatever, yeah, I broke a promise. I mean, it wasn't a big deal, it was just to an animal. Okay. 
So you met an animal. Could you tell us a little bit more about the animal that you met? It was, oh, it was a frog. Ew, it was like this slimy frog. Whoa, hold up, hold up. It's not slime, it's a special mucus that helps them breathe. It's amazing. Honestly, you want to be thankful that the frog even talked. Whoa, you're getting a little bit uh, carried away there. We don't, we don't need to know about the mucus. But um, yeah, so what were you doing to meet this frog? Oh yeah, I'll tell you what happened. So I was sponsored by the Golden Ball Company to have a Golden Ball toy. I mean, it is the latest in like TikTok made me buy it. Everybody who's anybody has one. So I was out playing with my Golden Ball. A Golden Ball. A ball that's golden. That, that makes no logical sense. Why would you have a ball that's golden? It'll hurt your foot when you kick it. It will like sink if you drop it in the water. I mean, who has a golden ball? Honestly, kids these days, you wouldn't understand. So anyway, I was out there with my golden ball. I was doing an ad, I was showing it different angles and then I decided to do a TikTok dance. And then I rolled down the hill into a pond and that's where I met the slimy frog. They are not slimy and gross. Look, I'm sick of this myth going around. They're amazing. The mucus helps them breathe and stay alive. They start off as like jelly and then turn into a frog from a tadpole. I mean, it... Okay. Yeah. Okay, so golden ball, you were, what were you doing? And how did you meet this animal, this frog? Well, I needed someone to get it, didn't I? I wasn't gonna touch that upon it like a green stuff floor. Not no way was I going in there. So yeah, I might have made a few like promises to the frog, but like it wasn't a big deal. I mean, I didn't think he'd take it seriously. But you made a deal with him, didn't you? You made promises. We've heard it from the frog. We've got his signed statement. Look, there was a kingfisher watching at the same time. We have eyewitnesses. What did you do? I said that if he went and got the ball for me, he could come back to the palace and he could sleep on my pillow and he could eat from my plate and he could like hang out with me. So you kept your promise then after he got you the ball for you? Well, of course I didn't let him do it. I mean, oh, frogs? on my silk pillows for eating from my silver place i don't think so like no where was that gonna happen um well i mean we know what happened next but do you want to tell us yeah my dad found out you mean the king yeah the king he just doesn't understand oh he's so annoying and he made me hang out with the frog and then well, I don't want to talk about what happened next. Look, I know this is really hard for you and someone of your beauty and your talent. Look, we don't want to waste your time any more than you want it wasted. Just tell us what happened. Fine. The frog said that he would stop living with me and like eating off my plate, sleep on my pillow. If I kissed him. Did what? If I, if I kissed him. What? Fine, if I kissed him! Oh! 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 I mean, the frog kissed you! Oh, the poor frog! Oh. So you, you kissed the frog and, um, what happened next? I got cancelled. What do you mean you got cancelled? We don't care what happened to you. What happened to the frog? Turns out it wasn't a frog after all. It was like a super famous YouTuber and it was really popular prince. Loads of money, loads of sponsorship deals and he cancelled me. I lost like half my followers and now he's really popular and people are like saying we should hashtag live happily ever after but he won't have anything to do with me. I mean, I don't blame him, do you? Uh, I mean, uh, thank you for that. Um, the interview has ended and um, I think we all need a little bit of time to process from that, don't you?
Okay, let's have our five quick questions to check to see if you are listening. The last question, remember, is going to be the same every week, all about the truths or the moral or things that you can find from a story, even when the story itself might not be true. So let's see. The first question is, why was the princess arrested? You can shout it out. You can type it. It's up to you. We're going to go quite quickly through it. Why was the princess arrested? Because she broke her promise. Big deal. Right. What was she playing with? The people interviewing her, the police were very surprised because it just didn't make sense. And every time I've heard this story, I thought it doesn't make sense. She was playing with a golden ball. Yes. Well done if you got that right. Who found out and made her keep her promise? So she ditched the frog. She tried not to keep her promise. Who was it that found out? Again, you can shout it. You can type it. It's totally up to you. A lot of people getting these right, I can see. Yep, her dad, her dad, the king. Yep, and he made her keep her promise. This is a slightly different question, but I think it's really important to raise when you're having stories and fairy tales where there's often someone else making decisions for you. Should we ever have to hug or kiss someone we don't want to? Whether that's a frog, whether it's our great Auntie Nora who's come to visit, or should we ever have to hug someone or kiss someone if we don't want to? Even if someone says, well, you made a promise. The answer to that, I hope everyone is shouting it out, is no, no way at all. No means no. Well done. Just think it's important to point that out in these stories. And last question. This is one for you to think about, remember, and not to answer right now. What are the truths in this story, especially when there's maybe some things in the story that you disagree with? Does it tell us anything about the people who wrote those stories or what people used to think? about maybe marriage and about women and I don't know about frogs so that's one for you to think about that was some brilliant listening well done everybody right let's get that off and let's get back to what we're doing we're going to play a game now you know I like you to move around so frogs are amphibians amphibian means double life I don't know if you've heard the phrase like ambidextrous where people can use both hands or even ambivalent where people don't really care which side to pick so ambi and um, um, amphibian means double life because frogs live in the water and in the land some of the time. So we're going to have a bit of a run around, a bit of a move around. If you're up for it, remember, you can make your grown-ups join in as well. If you want to just point instead of running to the places, you can do that too. So one side of your room, this side is going to be the pond. So we've got pond. Anytime I say pond, that's where you have to go as quickly as possible. Make sure you move any kind of chairs or things in the way that you might fall over. The other side is going to be the bank. So the bank of the pond. So we've got pond, we've got bank, and then right in the middle is a log. So if I shout bank, you need to go to the bank. That's right, isn't it? I can't remember now which way it's going. I think we're going to have to write it down somewhere maybe. So pond is that way. That's right. Bank is this way, log in the middle. So pond, bank, log. If I shout a froggy frenzy, I just want you to hop about, rivers, jump about as much as you want until I say freeze. Okay, so pond, bank, log. Okay, are you ready? Pond, so go there quickly. Bank, log, so you all should be in the middle now. Pond, bank, bank, pond, log. Froggy frenzy, hop about, ribbit, do whatever you want to until I say freeze. Freeze. Pond. Bank. Pond. Bank. Pond. Log. If there's a few of you running, sometimes you can say the person who got there first is the winner. It's up to you how you play this. So we're all at log, I think. Pond. Bank. Pond. Bank. Log. Froggy frenzy, ribbit, jump, whatever you want, swimming if you need to, and freeze. Frogs often, if you watch them, are very, very still. So see how still you can stand. Froggy frenzy, let's have another froggy frenzy. Get all of your movements out and freeze and sit down. Brilliant. 
feel like I pointed in the wrong places that time, but you know what I was supposed to be doing. So we're going to go. I tried to go to the pond this week. I had a bit of a problem with the snow. So I've got some of my video from last year when I visited the pond and filmed it. And I've added some extra bits in. So you will be traveling back in time for some of this and then forward in time. So let's watch to see about the exploring. And then we'll have some show and tell. I've got so many things to show you this week. So get ready to watch my nature walk. We've got beautiful blue skies and we're going to explore the pond. So come along with us. For the last few months, ponds have kind of seemed an empty, quiet place, but there's been a lot going on. And now you'll start to see some changes. Maybe you'll see some pond skaters or dragonflies, maybe even a newt or two. But if you keep watching carefully, you're going to notice a lot of life starting in the pond. One thing that you need when you're investigating ponds, not nets or wellies, but patience. You need a lot of patience. It can take a lot of visits to the pond to actually see the frogs or the tadpoles or the frog spawn. You have to be patient. We need to be patient right now because we just spotted a huge amount of frog spawn but I think there's some frogs moving in there too. So we're going to be patiently sitting to see if we can spot one. Did you know that toads lay their eggs in long lines like this, but frogs like we saw lay them in clumps of frog spawn in a kind of jelly-like substance. They lay hundreds of them because tadpoles are really vulnerable to predators. But if they do survive, and you probably know this, they start to grow their little legs, lose their tail and go through metamorphosis to change into a frog. It's a really fascinating process if you get to see all of it. So while we're eating some food and waiting patiently to see the frogs, maybe you could talk about something you've had to wait for. What's been the hardest thing you've had to wait for? And do you have any tips on how to be patient while you're doing it? When I was thinking about ponds, this artist, Monet, popped into my head because of this picture that he painted of his pond. It's very famous. Monet is really famous for Impressionism, where he kind of dabbed the paint on rather than doing perfect strokes. And this picture is one of his most famous. It sold for £40 million. But then I started thinking about a different artist who used a very different medium. This is Andy Goldsworthy. He's alive still today, and he uses nature to make sculptures and art around on the land. He uses all sorts of different things, leaves, twigs, even ice, to build different things. He has even been known to use cow poop and human hair. I don't know if I'd like doing that. But his art really inspires me, so I kind of mix those two styles together. I took natural items from around me, just like Andy Goldsworthy, but I also tried to give the impression of a landscape, just like Claude Monet. He used to go out and observe and see what he could draw from what he could see. So that's what I tried to do as well. Did use my imagination a little bit because I set it at night time with the moon and the dark sky there. Try not to use too many wet things because that can sometimes make your picture a little bit soggy. But just experiment, have fun, change things around and then just take a picture. And there you go, you've got your own lovely landscape. This year's visit to the pond got cancelled because it is covered in snow and we went to build snowmen instead with our friends. So I thought we would have a little bit of a closer look at a frog instead. Now if you look at our ears, we have an outside flap to them. Frogs are different, they just have this flat disc covering their ear and it allows them to hear the softest of sounds. They've got these big round eyes which help them spot their predators like hedgehogs, they like a tasty frog once in a while. But actually they have another purpose which I thought was a little bit gross when I heard about it, but actually very fascinating. So when they swallow their food or put their food in their mouth, they close their eyes tightly and that means their eyes, those big round eyes, push down on the food and help it go down their neck. 
So frog skin is brilliant. First of all, it helps camouflage them and some frogs will make their skin poisonous to make them even safer when it comes to predators. They will also sometimes change their skin color to help camouflage, which I didn't know. So the skin of a frog is very thin and wet and so they can breathe in air and they can take in water and drink water through their skin, which is handy. Another handy thing is that they shed their skin every few weeks. I didn't know that. And some of them eat it, which I guess makes for an easy clean up and is kind of a snack on the go, which is fantastic. They have those short legs at the front, but those very powerful long legs legs at the back and they help them leap up to, listen to this, one and a half meters. Maybe you want to step that out and see how easy it will be for you to jump that. It is a long way for a little frog. Frogs are often famous for their big wide mouths that help them swallow their prey but they've also got a long tongue with a sticky end that helps them to kind of fire it out and grab flies and things that it might want to eat. So frogs are pretty fantastic and it would be great if you can find out even more facts this week. Maybe find out about some different types of frogs around the world because there are some really fascinating frogs out there. So I have been joined by a guest, sadly not a frog, but I'm sure you can jump as high. Yep, you've got a frog there. So Evan's going to join in and see how you do on this quiz. So it's about things that we haven't mentioned, but linked to pond life. So let me get my face up here. All right. So to answer these questions, you either put your hands on your head for the question that's to do with you. have got your head next to it. Shoulders for shoulders, knees for knees. It'll make sense when you see in the next slide. So here we have a natter jack toad. Check him out. So frogs and toads are different, but they do have some big similarities. So one of these is a lie, a complete and utter lie. I'm going to have to move my face, aren't I, so that you can see. There we go. So natter jacks are mainly nocturnal. If you think that's the lie, put your hands on your head. Natterjack toads breed in warm, shallow pools on sand dunes and heaths. If you think that's a lie, put your hands on your hips. And one clutch, a group of eggs in the water, contains 10 to 20 eggs. Put your hands on your knees if you think that is the lie. What are you going to do, Evan? Hands on your head or shoulders or knees? Hmm. Knees. Which one? Knees. Okay, put your hands on your knees then. Right, let's see if he's got it right. It is, that is the lie. Remember, frogs lay a lot of eggs and toads lay lots and lots and lots of eggs so that more of them are likely to survive with their vulnerability to prey and predators, to predators rather than a prey. Right, next one about a smooth newt. Do you know I've never seen a newt? I know some of you will have in your ponds. So the newt, which one is the lie? Smooth newts spend the winter under rocks in compost heaps or buried down in the mud. Smooth newts only eat on land. They feed on insects, caterpillars, worms, and slugs. These newt tadpoles have feathery gills. Which do you think is the lie? So on your head, if you think it's the top one, shoulders, if you think it's a middle one, and knees. What are you thinking, Evan? Head. Shoulders? Shoulders, okay. He thinks it's shoulders. Let's see. He hasn't seen any of these and he can't yet read. So he's not giving away any of the answers. Let's see. Oh, how did you get that right? <laughs> you just knew it. That's pretty amazing. He's a very child genius I've got here. Smooth newts only eat on land. They feed on insects, caterpillars, worms and slugs. That is a lie. Remember, so, well, I don't know if you know that newts are also amphibians. They will also eat in the water too. Some of you are getting it right. Well done, those of you. And I think we've got one more, the cane toad. Here he is, looking a little bit stern. The cane toad, one of these is a lie, remember. Cane toads are fussy eaters. They'll only eat particular types of insects. A bit like you. You will only eat certain foods, won't you? A group of cane toads is called a knot or a nest. Cane toads are toxic. Some predators are immune to the venom, but others aren't. What are we thinking is a lie? Head, shoulders, knees. Every time I say that, I want to burst into song. What are you thinking? <sighs> You're thinking heads. Are you going to go with Evan? He's got two right so far. Oh, I can't remember. So I'm not going to give any clues. It is the heads. Is that what you said? 
Yeah. How, how is he getting that right? Yeah. Honestly, very clever. Cane toads are fussy eaters. They'll only eat particular types of insects. Nope, they are not fussy. They'll pretty much eat anything, I'm sure. Well done, everybody. Brilliant. Now, we're into the session that is going to be a lot of talking from me because I have so many different things to show you about that people have made. And I know I haven't got everyone's up there, but I have got a lot. So if I've missed yours and you really want me to show it, get your grown up, just send me a message so I can include it next week. But let's see what you've all been up to. Let's get it up here. Remember, if you want to send in this week, it'll be Pathfinder Frogs. You put in the subject list at the line. You can pop it on Facebook in the big group thread that we have there. You can send it to me on Instagram. But look at Freya and Darcy, the beautiful, beautiful moon. I love how the creators pop out. And Ethan's frog here, a frog, we've got frogs on the brain, bird here pops up, which I think is fantastic. Well done. Ava made a massive bird. And with moving legs that she has hung up in her bedroom now. And Liliana and her monkey made a nest out of willow branches. Fantastic. Amir made one out of Lego. Look at that. I love it. The way that she's added some soft things as well. Because I presume that Lego will be a bit hard for birds. Although are they Lego birds in there. So maybe not. And Jake has got a beautiful moon there. I love the way the colours blend in the sky. Well done, Jake. Bronte and Pippa, well, they had a few things to show me, but I picked these because I just thought they were magnificent. Look at these beautiful ponds here. Fantastic. And I, uh, she, I, she, sorry, my son's talking to me. You're going to have to make sure you listen. So I has made her own recipe to make these beautiful nests. And this is Evans. Look, Evan, your picture's up there. They made a nest and Amelia made a nest as well. And Ocean, another one out of Willow, which I really would like to be getting better at doing myself. Evan needs to say something to me. I'm sorry, everyone. What do you need to say? Yes, you can keep that. Okay. Right. You can also keep this. Right. Do you want to go off and show the others? Yeah. Brilliant. Sorry, everyone. Right. Katie has made this beautiful mm -hmm. nest in a box here. And look at what Sebby's yeah. been up to. It's, it's a bit big for you, I know. We can make it smaller later. I Sebby has been up to lots. Look, he made an actual birdhouse. Fantastic. Percy tried to make a 3D gingerbread biscuit bird because I said that as a little challenge last week when someone mentioned it. But she did flat ones in the end, and they look beautiful and delicious. Excellent. And Callum has got a really cozy, comfy nest in here. What I really like this week is how you've taken natural items and scraptastic items and mixed them together. Brilliant. Tabitha has got a bird there, you can see, and a nest that she's made. And I think hers moves around as well. Some of you did Chrissy's live lesson. And mix it together with the bird nest as well, which is perfect. Darcy, look at the size of that nest that she made outside. Amazing. Gabriel has done a Minecraft bird. And Jack is another person who's mixed those two things together and made his bird move super duper. Look at these little robins that Darcy made out of an egg cup. I love that idea. And Lily there with her beautiful bird as well. It looks a bit like a peacock tail there. Well done. Emily, Emily did lots of things. I love the garland that you made, Emily, but I've just put one picture in here with her lovely nest. And Jake has made a bird feeder out of an apple. Brilliant idea. And again, some of those nests. I really wanted to do those with my kids this week, some chocolate nests, but they were poorly, so we hadn't done it. Jackson there with his nest and Jacob and Isaac with beautiful, to call it, I want to call everything frogs today. I think it's just because I got distracted. Beautiful chocolate nest there as well. Jackson, I love the material that you found to make the bottom of your box very comfy. I told you there were lots of these, didn't I? That's why I'm going through quite quickly. Matthew has made a 3D nest, a 3D tree with a nest on the top and a slide for the chicks to go down. So cool. And Lanny, or is it Lanny? Lanny, Lanny has made a beautiful bird's nest here. I love it with the eggs in the middle as well. And are they speckled just like the real eggs? Lovely. Jaden has been making a colourful birdhouse and I couldn't find the name. I know it's somewhere. Um, someone made a beautiful um, 3D bird 
and they made it move and flap and everything. It looked great. Oats and Iris have been busy making nests as well. They look fantastic. And Charlie has made a beautiful nest here for the very colourful bird. Looks really sturdy, Charlie. And Ollie, which I presume is your brother, is there as well. This lovely, comfy nest. Sophie made an excellent one outside. A lot of you did them outside this week. There's so many. I'm going to have to speed up a little bit. Ollie is there with his eagle's nest. And Fabian did some wonderful work in Minecraft. Aria and Phoenix made one outside for that little robin and Kobe made a really comfy, comfy and colourful nest here. Look at this, George and Harry. At first I thought Harry's was a real nest, but he's made that himself. And George made one out of ice, which is pretty genius. Love that idea. Josh had made one his out of pipe cleaners, which I never thought of doing, but that is a great idea because you can bend them a lot. And Aaron there has got his beautiful moon. I love all the different things that you pick to put on your moon. Oh, I'm running out of breath. Milo has got a lovely, she has a special, oh, he has a special egg, sorry, that he's put inside his old nest. So now he has a safe place to put it. Alyssa made a star nest, really good idea. And we don't have names for these, but they're Raduna puzzles from last time. Really lovely. And there's a tiger there as well. That's a pretty, pretty good find for a nature walk. Elena and has made this these beautiful nests, I think out of salt door or clay door. And Billy, he did lots of things as well, but I had to put this on because I'm really craving some chocolate right now. Izzy made an eagle out of felt. Look at that mouth. I love it mouth beak I guess is the proper word and look at Kiliana Carter and Clayton sorry I missed the n off there look at these great birds so fantastic I love how everyone does it very differently and Kobe used felt and foil and all sorts to make his moon picture we're still going kids Whew, we're nearly there Pearl JJ and Rose made their 3D birds and they're right in the you can see the teeny tiny robin there is an actual bird there Hannah has made a lovely poem, and I like how they've she, they've included scientific facts in there as well about, about, about the leader eating first. Really clever to do that in a poem. It's hard to do. Whew, I am out of breath now, so I'm going to let somebody else do the talking. Well, I'm going to let me do the talking, but me last week after I made my favourite scraptastic thing so far. So let's see what that's like. This is one of my favourite ways so far to reuse recycled items. I just made a bunch of stamps. I had an old lace there, wrapped it round. One of them, I just tore the cardboard apart and I just tried to think of different textures that would make me help make me a pond picture. That's what I was aiming for. But honestly, I just ended up having a lot of fun trying out different things and experimenting. So there's my tadpole. And I did some weaving as well. I got really carried away with this. I made a lot of stamps. I didn't end up using them all, but here you can see some of them that I made. If you're more patient than me, you will try out your stamps on scrap paper. I would advise that. I just went straight for it. And I loved how, just like impressionist paintings, it gives the idea of what a pond might look like, but you have to stand a bit further away to get the whole picture together. I love the way the reeds look at the top with that straight edge of the cardboard. This one didn't turn out quite so well because it went a bit too, I put too much paint on basically. So instead I decided to get some glue and some green paint, mix it together, get some string from some old Christmas packages. And I decided to make some weeds that would kind of be 3D on it. This is, my, this is my frog spawn, again, just experimenting. I found you did have to be a bit careful with the amount of paint that you put on because otherwise it would turn to splodges. I loved how the string turned out with the light going through and I added then the tadpoles. I painted onto the stamps for this one because I really needed that shape to stand out. I ended up adding a lot more detail, a few bits of collage a bit and around the outside, I even decided to write a little bit of a poem. Great, you might hear a bit of a sound in the background. There's an electronic chameleon going around my legs. But this is what you could do this week. You can make your own stamps just like I did. You can use all sorts of items to do it. You can create an impressionist picture either with natural items 
or with your stamps and create a watery world. So you could do that in Minecraft with Lego, any way that you wanted. Okay, so I'm gonna say goodbye now and try and catch this chameleon. Let's zoom in around my feet. I hope you're having a great week. I hope that if the snow's melted, you can go outside and explore and maybe find a frog spawn. Have a great week and mommy, I will see you soon. Mommy, no, hey. mommy, no, 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 There's no more snow. No, 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 this was a little bit of snow, wasn't the falling yesterday? But Evan's right, there's no more snow falling down just in time for the spring equinox next week. Anyway, take care, everyone. And I'll, oh, I nearly forgot the really, really important thing. Don't go, don't go. Stay there, stay there. Ooh, on YouTube, we have some extra videos, okay? So, like I said at the beginning, if you want a little bit extra, maybe a little bit more science about frogs, then go and check out Pathfinder Plus. If you're maybe Evan's age or a little bit older, or you just want to learn some more, we have a video. We have a video especially for you. And they're all up now on our YouTube channel. Anyway, take care, everyone. Bye.